What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be making some kitchen props. So while looking online I came across this picture and I really liked the textures so I thought it would be a lot of fun to recreate. Now this video is going to be more of a time lapse, speed modeling kind of video but I will be jumping in here and there to explain some of the things I'm doing and the reasons why. Alright, so let's just get started. So to start things off I'm going to select the cube and start blocking out that cutting board. I don't know the size of all these objects, so to figure all that out, I thought if I just get this cutting board out of the way first, I can start positioning and figuring out all the proportions of everything else later. Now I'm not going to worry about getting everything in its final state, I just want to start blocking it out, and then I can always come back and start working on things and finalizing them later. So let's go ahead and just get this cutting board out of the way. Alright, so that cutting board is all blocked out, now let's start positioning that roller. I believe it's called a rolling pin, but it's like a dough roller, and that's pretty straightforward. It's a few cylinders, so let's go ahead and start blocking out that shape. Alright, so that roller is all wrapped up, at least temporarily, so let's move on to the spoon. And now that's pretty straightforward, what I decided to do was start off with a cube and adding a few edge loops, and then I can start positioning all those vertices into the shape of a spoon. Once that main shape is done, I can go ahead and select some of those back faces, hit that circularize tool to create a circle, and then I can extrude that circle out to create the handle. Now I'm going to keep these objects in low polys, and then once I'm happy with the shapes, I can hit 3 on my keyboard to smooth them out. So let's go ahead and start playing around with these shapes until I get a nice wooden spoon.
All right, so my wooden spoon's looking good and we're gonna come back to it later. But next up, I believe it was like a pastry roller of some sorts. Mine kind of looked like a pizza cutter. Either way, it was in the reference. So what we're gonna do for that is start off with a cylinder and then I can start extruding that edge to give it different shapes. So let's go ahead and create that handle and then we can create another cylinder to create that blade. Alright, so our pizza cutter slash pastry roller is looking good. Next up is our big butcher knife. And that's pretty straightforward. We're going to use a big cube for the blade and then another cube for the handle. So let's go ahead and play around with these shapes so we can create a large butcher's knife.
Now our reference was showing a hole in the top of the butcher's knife blade, so to do that we're going to create a low poly cylinder and I can go ahead and boolean out a really small hole and then using the target weld tool and the multi cut tool I can go ahead and reattach all those vertices. So then once I hit three on my keyboard afterwards, everything smoothed out nicely and we have a nice hole into our blade. Alright, so the butcher's blade is looking good. Next up is a little pie server. So to do that, we're going to create a little cube. I can go ahead and start adding some edge loops and extruding some of those edges to get into a shape of one of those little pie servers. Now once again, I'm going to focus on keeping it in low polys, and then we can hit 3 on our keyboard to smooth it out and hopefully get a finalized, nice smooth shape. Now this shape is causing me a little bit of problems, so I spent a little bit more time playing around with the topology. I was getting some weird artifacts when I was smoothing it out, so I just needed to spend a little bit more time on it to get it into a state that I was happy with.
Alright, so that pie server is looking good. I just really quickly want to jump back to that butcher's knife. I wanted to have a little metal piece that was between those two wooden handles. So to do that, I'm going to add two edge loops on my blade, and I can extrude one of those faces so I have a metal piece that's running along the whole length of the handle. Hopefully it's just going to help make it look a little bit more realistic. So let's go ahead and just wrap up this butcher's knife, and then we can move on to that wooden bowl. Alright, so the butcher's knife is looking much better, so next up is that little wooden bowl. So to do that, I'm going to start off with a cylinder, I can bevel out some of those edges, and then for the little wooden stick that's inside, it's another cylinder that's just a little bit skinnier. So let's go ahead and block out these shapes, and then we can move on to the scissors.
Alright, so that wooden bowl is looking good. Next up are those little scissors. Now I didn't want to spend too much time on these scissors, I knew a lot of it wouldn't be in view. And like usual, I tried to spend two hours real time in my modeling, so these videos aren't crazy long, and that was quickly approaching. So I didn't want to spend too much time adding all those little details like a little beveled blade and all that. So all I decided to do was add a little cube, scale that nice and small, bevel out one end so it's rounded, and then I can extrude the other end for the long piece of the scissors where the blade is. Now like I said, I didn't want to add a lot of detail, I could have actually beveled out one of the edges so it looked like one of the blades were sharp, but honestly I didn't think that would really be in view, so I decided to keep it relatively simple. Now for the handle part of the scissors, I just did that with a curve, so I created an EP curve tool and drew out a couple points in the shape of those handles that I was looking for, similar to the reference photo. And then once I was happy with that shape, I can turn that into a sweet mesh to create the handle geometry. So let's go ahead and wrap up these scissors and then we can move on to some other things. Alright, so the scissors are looking good. I do come back later and adjust a few things, but they're looking good for now. Let's just move on to the next object, which was a small little fork. Now this is pretty easy. I decided to use a cylinder as the handle and then another little cube for the front piece where the fork is. 
Now all I did for that was add a few edge loops so I had three little fork pieces coming out and I can extrude those and just scale them in so they're pointy on the ends. And once again, keeping it really low in polys and then once I'm happy with the shapes, I can hit three on my keyboard to smooth them out. Alright, so that fork is looking good. Next up is something I couldn't figure out exactly what it was. I tried googling it and honestly I couldn't figure out what this was used for, so if you know let me know in the comments. But whatever it was, I wanted to recreate it. So for the handle I decided to do a little cylinder and then just extrude some of those edges to give it a little bit of shape. And then for all the little metal pieces on the end, I decided to do that with an EP curve tool. So similar to how we use the curve tool for the scissor handles, I'm going to do the same thing for all these little metal pieces. So I'm going to draw those points into those shapes and then I can turn that into a sweet mesh to create the geometry. So let's go ahead and wrap up this object and then we can move on to the corkscrew.
so that shape is looking good. Next up is our little corkscrew. Now for this, I decided to use a tool that I haven't used in a little bit, but it's on the Autodesk website, which I will show you right here. And I will also link it in the description below. It's free to use, so you can go ahead and download it. And I don't know why this doesn't come automatically with Maya, but it just gives you a curve tool that's in a spiral and it's really handy for corkscrews. Weirdly enough, I just remembered that this tool existed, so I decided this would be a great opportunity to use it. So let's go over exactly how this tool works. So once you install it, you'll see that there's a new menu option on the very top bar, it's called bonus tools. And if you click on that and you go down to create, you can create a spiral curve. Now I'm gonna click on this little square beside it so you can see all the settings that I use. So you can copy these if you'd like. I go ahead and adjust these a little bit more, but so this is what I use to create my little corkscrew. So once you're happy with the shape like any other curve, you can go to your create tab and turn that into a sweet mesh to create your geometry. Now, I'm not exactly happy with this shape just because it doesn't look like a corkscrew yet. So we're gonna go back and I'm gonna go edit some of these points so I can make it look a little bit more like a corkscrew. Once I'm happy with that shape, I can go back to my Create tab and I can turn that into a sweet mesh. Now I'm gonna play around with these sliders a little bit to get it more in the shape of a corkscrew. And one of those settings I'm gonna do is drag down that taper slider so it makes one of the ends of this corkscrew a little bit thinner than the other. Problem is it only does it to the top. So to reverse it, we're gonna go up to our curves on the very top menu and we're gonna to go to the very bottom to reverse the direction. And that's gonna reverse my taper so now it's on the bottom of my corkscrew. Now I end up adding a few points in my taper curve just to adjust the end so it's a little bit more thin in areas, but it shows you how quickly using this tool you can create some sort of corkscrew shape. Now I end up redoing my corkscrew later on like somewhere in the middle of my video. I just wasn't exactly happy with the thickness and how it was looking, but I do the exact same steps later on and redo it to create another one. Alright, so that little corkscrew is wrapped up. Next is that little grater that's on the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to use a cylinder, chop that in half to create the main shape, and then I can add a few edge loops where I want that grater mesh to go. Then all I have to do is select those faces, extract it from the model so it separates it from the geometry. And then I'm gonna duplicate that extracted piece so I can use one of them for the border of this cutout we created into the shape. And then the other one we're gonna use is just the greater material which we will apply later on in Substance Painter. So let's go ahead and play around with the shape so I can create some sort of cheese grater object.
All right, so our little cheese grater is looking good. Next up, I believe is a little strainer of some sort, so I'm not exactly sure, but to create this, we're gonna scale down the torus as that top little ring, and then as a mesh material on the bottom, that's just gonna be a sphere that we're gonna chop in half, and we're gonna use the bottom half as that mesh material. And later on in Substance Painter, we can add some sort of see-through mesh material to that half sphere. And then for the handle, I'm going to create that with a helix polygon primitive. Basically in my reference, it was showing a little skinny metal wire that's basically twisted as the handle. So to create that shape, I'm going to use a helix polygon primitive under the create tab. And then I can duplicate that same helix shape basically to create two that are almost interlocking with each other that are wrapped around really tightly. And then I just need to extrude both ends and reattach them to create that little handle shape. So let's go ahead and create this little strainer object. Alright, so now we created all of our shapes, now we can start adjusting a few things. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm also going to go redo that corkscrew. I just wasn't happy with the shape for some reason.
Alright, so now that we finally have a corkscrew that I'm happy with, let's quickly jump back to that cutting board we made earlier. I want to boolean out a little hole in the handle, and then we can start beveling out some of those edges. Alright, so last but not least is a little tiny string that's wrapped onto that hole we created into our cutting board. So to do that, I'm going to create an EP curve tool and draw out a bunch of points into the shape of a little string. And then I can go ahead and start moving around these points to get them into a shape that I was happy with. Now this one definitely was tedious. I ended up moving around these points for quite some time. I just wanted this shape to look like it was in some sort of knot on the end, so I had to really mess around with the points to make it look like that line was wrapped in on itself. So let's go ahead and play around with this string shape, and then once we're happy with it, we can wrap up all of the modeling and we can go over how I did those UVs.
Alright, so here is the model in its finished form. Now I decided to break this thing up into three different groups for each of the three textures applied. So in the very first group, it's half of the objects, some of the larger ones. The second group is all of the other objects on top of the cutting board. And the last object and group is just the cutting board itself. Now you could have easily combined some of these textures so you could have had less texture maps if you wanted it that way. But I just wanted to try to get the most out of my resolution, out of my textures. So I decided to break this thing up into three. So that's exactly how I did all of those UVs. Now let's jump into Substance Painter so we can start texturing. All right, so now in Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. Once that's loaded in, you can give it a quick look to make sure everything's looking correct. And once it is, you can go over to your texture set settings, scroll down to bake mesh maps, choose your output size, I chose 4K, and make sure to check on that use low poly mesh as high poly mesh since we only have one mesh to work with. And then bake out your textures. All right, so really quickly, because we want to have some opacity in our materials, we need to change our shader. So we need to go to the top right corner to our shader settings, and I need to change this to alpha blending. This is going to allow us to add an opacity channel to our materials. So if I go back to my texture set settings, I can scroll up to this little plus icon and I can add an opacity channel. So now I can add a see-through material to our objects. Alright, so now starting at the top of our texture set list, we're going to start texturing our cutting board. So for this, I used some smart materials. I started using one as the base and I removed all that dirt and grunge from it. And then I took a wood pattern from another smart material effect and I just pasted that into the same group. So let's go ahead and start playing around with some of these settings so I can have a nice base wood texture on our cutting board. Alright, so the wood material is looking good. Next up is that little tiny piece of string. So I found a little rope material on the Substance Source website, and I just downloaded that right into my library. So I'm going to go to my Materials tab, and I'm going to drag on that rope material, and I can apply it to that mesh. Alright, so our cutting board textures are looking good. Next up is our first group of items. So we're going to go start texturing those, starting off with that roller. So similar to how we did that texture on our cutting board, I'm going to go choose another wood material in our smart materials, and I can apply it to the roller.
Alright, so continuing on with these wood materials, we're going to jump to that little pizza roller, or pastry roller, or whatever it is, but we're just going to continue adding on some more wood textures. Now, to keep these wood materials different from one another, we're just going to continue altering those little shades of wood, so some are going to be a little more orange, some are going to be a lighter and darker browns, just so all these wood materials are not looking too similar. So let's continue on, we can wrap up these textures on this little pizza roller. Alright, so our pizza pastry roller is looking good. Next up is that large butcher blade. So for this, I ended up using an iron forged old material, the smart material as that base. And then I ended up stealing a few of the effects from the steel ruin smart material and pasting those directly in my iron forged folder. Now later on, I ended up coming back to this and adding a few extra metals. So the tip of the blade was a little bit brighter and as it went up, it was like more rough and bumpy. So I ended up adding a few extra masking effects to this later on, but for now this is just what I did as a base texture and then I added another wood material similar to all the other woods in our scene. I just added another smart material wood effect to that handle. So let's go ahead and wrap up this butcher blade and then we can move on to the other objects.
All right, so our large knife is wrapped up, at least for now, we do come back and work on it a little bit more later. But next up was that Pi server. Now this was pretty straightforward, the whole thing is this metal, so we're gonna go choose a smart material and we can apply it to the mesh. Alright, so all of those objects now have materials applied. Next up is moving on to our second group of objects. So we're going to start with the cheese grater. So we're going to start off with one of those materials that we imported earlier. It's called metallic mesh wall panel. It looked like a little cheese grater, so I decided to use this as that little effect. So we're going to go ahead and select that material and apply it to the mesh. And then for all the other objects on that cheese grater, I'm just going to use an iron old material and apply it to those meshes as well. Alright, and then for the little strainer object beside it, we're going to use the other object I imported, which was called Stainless Steel Wave Grill. Once again, I thought this would be fitting for this mesh material, so I downloaded that off the Substance Source website, and now we're going to apply it to that mesh. Now that mesh material is looking a little bit too clean, so I ended up adding a few masking effects onto it just to make it look a little bit more dirty and to make it fit in a little bit with the other objects around it. Alright, so for the rest of the objects in this group, I just continue adding different smart materials to all of the meshes. Once all of these objects have materials applied, we can start tweaking a few of the settings and start finalizing some of these materials. So let's go ahead and just wrap up the rest of these objects.
Alright, so now all of our meshes in our scene have materials applied. So now it's much easier to see how these materials are working beside one another. We can start tweaking some of these settings. So let's go ahead and start tweaking a few things. Alright, so now that we tweaked a few of the settings, let's jump into the render to see how things are looking. Now all I do here is just remove that background image and bring up that floor plane to match up with the bottom of my model. And I'm also going to quickly adjust that focal length. It always starts relatively low in Substance Painter, so I'm going to bring that all the way up to 50. And then I'm going to start just tweaking some of those environment maps and the lighting just so I can start seeing how these materials are looking and then we can go back and start tweaking a few things. Now I noticed how the UVs on my cutting board were slightly slanted, especially near the end where the handle was, so I quickly jumped back into Maya, made a few extra cuts so I could make them more straight, and then I re-imported that model back into Substance. Now since we re-imported that model and I changed some of that UV map, I'm going to re-bake these textures and then we can continue tweaking some settings.
All right, and that's it guys. That's basically the whole texturing and modeling process that I did to create these kitchen props. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more weekly 3D content. And if you feel like supporting the channel even further, as well as get access to additional content, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.